So here I am Out on the streets with my head in my hands I've got no plans Only to see you again Don't get me wrong Sometimes I like being kicked on the ground I'm not that strong But then I come to my senses With the scar on his face It's a charade It's just the way you've been living Yeah I'm coming You can feel my power And I feel what is real When she feels me And I feel what is real when she feels me, yeah. And I feel... Dan here, and I just wanted to put a little snippet about Astroworld and what we do because I want to start getting the word out because I think it's becoming more and more of a, a giant community, and I want to get the word out to some other people. So what we do at Astroworld is 
We do hold, we hold uh, astrophotography chats on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. and Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And we just talk astrophotography. Wednesday's more of a techie kind of advanced uh, intermediate and Fridays is more of a newbie kind of thing. So if you want to check us out and if you want to, you know, hang out with some semi-decent people that like to go off the rails a little bit and have fun while they're doing it, um, come check us out at astroworldweb.com. And you can check out the schedule and you can sign up for all the free giveaways that we do. We just gave away an Eagle 4 Pro, an Optolong filter kit, um, uh, Charles Brackenstein's books, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So come to astralweb.com, hang out with us, have a good time. And as always, remember to keep imaging, keep educating, and clear skies. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.
throw on my telescope now. For the next solar eclipse, October annular eclipse. Up. Oh. <laughs> don't 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 let your glasses fall off when there's a solar eclipse. You might hurt yourself. Let's try that again. Are you ready for the next solar eclipse? Are you ready for it? October fourteenth this year is an annular eclipse, followed by April, another total solar eclipse, and you can get your own branded. Astro World Telescope Solar Glasses made by American Paper Optics today on the website, astroworldtelescopes.com, or give me a call, 516-273-3771, and we can get you a set of four of these 
for $9.99. Come on down again, astraltelescopes.com and keep imaging as long as you don't have a solar shade on. <laughs> keep educating and clear skies and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Sunny skies, the smell of the palm tree air. Looking back, I could never feel fair. The way the music has touched my soul. The way that the south holds its control. But I've got a new way, a new way to choose. I'm gonna start running back. It's got to mean something. It's got to. So here I am. Streets with my head in my hands. I've got no plans, only to see you again. Don't get me wrong, sometimes I like being kicked on the ground. I'm not that strong, but then I come to my senses. Don't 
to that man with the scar on his face. It's a charade. It's just the way you've been living. Yeah! I'm coming. You can feel my power. Yeah. And I feel what is real when she feels it. Hi everyone, Dan here, and I just wanted to put a little snippet about Astroworld and what we do because I want to start getting the word out because I think it's becoming more and more of a, a giant community and I want to get the word out to some other people. So what we do at Astroworld is we do hold, we hold uh, astrophotography chats on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. and Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and we just talk astrophotography. Wednesdays more of a techie kind of advanced and intermediate, and Fridays is more of a newbie kind of thing. So if you want to check us out and if you want to, you know, hang out with some semi-decent people that like to go off the rails a little bit and have fun while they're doing it, um, come check us out at astroworldweb.com and you can check out the schedule and you can sign up for all the free giveaways that we do. We just gave away an Eagle 4 Pro, an Optolong filter kit, um, uh, Charles Brackenstein's books and a whole bunch of other stuff. So come to astroworldweb.com, hang out with us, have a good time. And as always, remember to keep imaging keep educating, and clear skies. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Can't be 
can control using a powerful hand. I want to be you, I want to see you, don't taste the kisses of hate. Don't try to tell me, don't try to sell me, don't try to say it's too late. You're gonna push me to the edge, back me in a corner, making me stand in your shoes. Push me to the edge, hide a little color, it's black and white and blue. Black and white. Kisses of hate. Don't try to tell me. Don't try to sell me. Don't try to say it's too late. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna push me to the edge. Back me in a corner, making me stand in your shoes. Push me to the edge. Hide a little color. It's black and white and blue. Black and white and blue. I want to be, I want to see, don't taste the kisses of hate, don't try to tell me, don't try to sell me, don't try to say it's too late, 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 push me to the edge, back me in a corner, making me stand in your shoes, push me to the edge, hide a little color, it's black and white and Lot of women. 
solar eclipse October annular eclipse up oh. <laughs> don't 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 let your glasses fall off when there's a solar eclipse you might hurt yourself let's try that again are you ready for the next solar eclipse are you ready for it October 14th this year is an annular eclipse followed by April another total solar eclipse and you get your own branded Astro World Telescope solar glasses made by American Paper Optics today on the website astroworldtelescopes.com or give me a call 516-273-3771 and we can get you a set of four of these for $9.99. Come on down again astroworldtelescopes.com and keep imaging as long as you don't have a solar shade on. <laughs> keep educating and clear skies and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Sunny skies, the smell of palm tree air. Looking back, I could never feel fair. With music, it's touched my soul. The way that the south holds its control. But I've got a new way, a new way to choose. I'm gonna start running back to the land of the new.
And oh, no, I'm sorry about that, guys. All right, it wasn't perfect. There we go. And we'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of that. Yeah, got, and there we got, go. You got, you got names right over. You know, we <laughs> yeah. spaces. Yeah, I guess I didn't do that. So I'll just do. I'll just do this. Here we go. So I got the names there and everything. And I there you go. There you go. Awesome. So how's it going, everybody? Saturday afternoon. And we don't do this a lot, but it's a, you know, it's two o'clock Eastern time. Um, and I believe it's a uh, eight ish over in the Netherlands with uh, where Weedo is. And uh, we want to thank, thank Weedo for coming on and, and enjoying us. I got to throw it out there uh, to a couple members that kind of, I believe, hit you up. I think it was Gideon Sanders. I think uh, maybe uh, yeah, introduced true, us. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so thank you to Gideon for uh, introducing the, the the two of us. And and we're here we're here with Weedo Orlemans from the Netherlands from Weedo's Astroform, and it's going to be a a great time getting to learn about how his process and how his journey of astrophotography and changing into that lifestyle because you know we all talk about <laughs> that change because everyone says. Yeah call it a hobby it's not a hobby you change what you're doing because you're off you're you're up till three o'clock in the morning yeah. the only thing you're happy about is that your significant other knows you're not at a bar you know so uh <laughs> so, I see it all the time, I see so, it all the time. my <laughs> wife knows exactly where i am I always know. It's, it's a and very it's safe a uh, uh, midlife crisis. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I don't know how safe it is because there's a lot of a lot of new yeah. toys coming out because yeah. a lot of yeah. expensive the toys. Money involved can be a bit tricky. That's yeah. <laughs> it's, instead of a Corvette, you're buying an astrophysics or a plane wave. So I mean, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so so it could be worse. It could it, be worse. It could be worse, <laughs> but. Hey, Rito, thanks for coming on and hanging out with us. It's a real privilege to have you. And, uh, you know, it's it's going to be great to learn about your, your process. And I'm sure we got a bunch of questions coming on. On We got about 20 people watching on, on YouTube right now. Um, and uh, we're here. So welcome, Rito. Uh, how's it going? Uh, it's going very well. Thank you. And Dan, super nice to invite you uh, to your uh, Astro World. I, I'm glad to be here and glad to be part of the show. And um, yeah, we just had this March now and we finally had our first week of clear skies in the Netherlands. So I'm great. I finally could test uh, a new wireless uh, rig I have been building and testing out. So uh, I'm so super happy with that. Um, yeah, and I'm glad to, to tell you a little bit about uh, astrophotography, how I got into the hobby, like you, you said, and uh, the kind of things I did, the kind of astrophotography gear I used, photos I took. So whatever you want to do is uh, fine with me. Yeah, so uh, well, well, why don't <laughs> Answering you... Answering question, questions if I know the answer to the questions, so... Yeah, everybody throw some questions in the, in the chat for us to keep the conversation cool. going or else we're going to have to count on Eric's questions and we don't know where that goes, so... So, uh, <laughs> so, so, so it's it's kind of like the People unknown comedian with the garbage. Two, two, two difficult uh, questions. Yeah, me, I, so. uh, trust me, I'm prepped. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Well, what is the square better. root of negative one? No, just yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you know, you know, pi. Uh, yeah. yes, three pi, three, pi. dot one, <laughs> dot one, four, seven. Good enough. You win. <laughs> you win. <laughs> I'm open there. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So first off, we have Dan asking, "What's your favorite type of telescope?" Very difficult question. Very. I, I like many different kinds of telescopes, but I think one of the most uh, multi-purpose telescopes I bought was, was I have to say, the Edge HD 8-inch uh, uh, telescope. And it's not because it will provide you with uh, APOD pictures, I think, <laughs> but you, you can have like a very decent, uh, if you buy it with a 0.7 reducer, you have this nice, uh, 1500 millimeter focal length telescopes, which you, which you can aim at smaller objects in the night sky. For instance, we are now entering spring. So from spring till June, at least in the Northern hemisphere, we will have galaxy season, right? So super nice to uh, to to use the Edge HD to, to get some of these uh, uh, galaxies that are 20, 100 million light years away, like uh, M101 or M51. Um, so that's super great, and you can also do it for uh, use it for some basic planetary imaging as well. So yeah, uh, yeah. Larry is already making it. fun of me. Uh, <laughs> you know that uh, they they know that like like I'm um, reducers. Uh, 
reducers are fine for me with longer focal length telescopes and everybody i it's like real estate though to me i'm like i'm like i don't want to give away one millimeter of anything but i'm especially when i'm dealing with a refractor sub 1000 millimeter type stuff um you know i'm like yeah, you could take it faster, but it doesn't matter to me because I'm in Portal 9. So why? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know? That's also, I was worried about that first. Like, uh, I need to have a fast uh, refractor telescope. But usually you also, you end up with like, uh, like a, a shorter focal length uh, uh, apochromatic refractors, which are great for capturing like uh, vast nebulae eh, mm. in our own Milky Way. That, that's great. But at, at one point you get aperture fever yep oh, you're yes. looking at that pac-man nebula and you think i want to i want to have a higher resolution yeah. image or you, you're, you're looking at that m51 whirlpool galaxy you want to zoom in <laughs> and then you you can have a longer focal length refractor but at one point they get really heavy <laughs> yeah yeah and and, right? and that's a good so, point because we were talking about that last night on the show last night we were talking about how what is that sweet spot and weight? You know, I know I guess it's relative because yeah. some people are bodybuilders out there, and some people, most people are yeah. like me, like no upper body strength at all. You know, but uh, you know that <laughs> that that you know, we would. I was thinking maybe like the nine and a quarter. We were we were talking about was that kind of sweet spot as far as portability and focal length is concerned. Yeah, I think you're you're about right. I think if you look at also the apochromatic refractors, they go to I, I'm calculating in millimeters, <laughs> but they go to about one twenty seven, like one thirty yep. millimeters. There yep. are some bigger ones out there, but I think but again, when, like when you, you get, get to when you get to eight nine inch, people will switch. People yeah. will switch to yeah. I think uh, a modified Schmidt Kessel grain or maybe uh, also what is it? Uh, a Richie Kretchen, Richie, for yep, instance. Yeah. yeah, the RCs, yeah. But, yeah. How, do you, how do you pronounce it, actually? But, uh, <laughs> you uh, you yeah. sounded like you got it just right on. Yeah, you, you got it just right. Uh, you I ask just, that something. question, you're going to get four different pronunciations so, yeah, on the show. Will. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just call just, them RCs. RCs, <laughs> RCs. Yeah. RCs. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now you were yeah. saying, um, and we we're talking about the edge, the edge eight and i also i also have an edge eight um yeah. and i think it's great but to what I, dan and i were talking yesterday that sweet spot the nine and a quarter for portability do do you think you would maybe want to have a little bit more reach would you do it you do you think like uh or do you have that man because i know i have it if I could have gotten the nine yeah. and a quarter where it was available, I would have just gotten the nine and a quarter and been done with it. But because of, you know, uh, the but pandemic, also, uh, Eric, the world, I think, you know, I got what I, I could. I think but because I, I also saw people that have a nine, nine and a quarter and they want an 11. And people that have an 11 want maybe a 14. You know, I, yeah, I, 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 people with the 11 go, I want a 14. Yeah. I want a 14. Yeah. <laughs> You, you no. know what? But it also well, depends I, I do, on. I, 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 go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I think I, I think it depends on a lot of things. Uh, but, uh, trying to answer it a little bit more seriously, like you have. I'm also from the Netherlands, so uh, you have to take your budget into account as well, right? Exactly. So nine and a quarter exactly. inch is a is a lot more expensive than the eight inch. Um, I, I would have liked to buy actually the nine and a quarter inch, but there is like the money aspect, and also I think. A weight just carrying outside setting it up and I don't know exactly the differences uh, from the top of my head but um, I think like at one point also these uh, modified schmidt cassegrain telescopes they get a lot yep. happier right so they do. Yeah. the they eight do. inch I really like it because I, I keep it inside it, it weighs about six seven kilos I can set it up yep. if I use it for deep sky astrophotography I'm completely happy with that I mean uh, 1500 millimeter focal length I get very nice pictures of galaxies and uh, some of the smaller nebulas. But um, uh, for, for planetary imaging, definitely you want to have a bigger aperture and a longer focal length telescope to do some really high resolution imaging there. I, I would have loved to have a C11. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, but, at, but at the same time, I mean, in, in, my, in my skies, Saturn is about like, it's very low on the horizon. Eh? So 
ja, wat, wat doen we wel wat, 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 uh, wat, 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 Oh, 52. 52. 52. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah, big I difference. Think that I'm, at, I'm at 42 something. myself. Yeah. So 50 is a big So difference. Jupiter is great. Mars is great for me. But if uh, Saturn is really like 20, 25 degrees yeah. up in the sky. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I never got a super high resolution uh, picture with the, with the Edge HD. But it, I think it's more because of the sky conditions than that it has to do with the optics. Hey, well, we got we got another question for you. Um, which uh, this is from Beatrice? Which astrophoto of yours are you most proud of, and why? And where can we view it? Oh, <laughs> that's no, three no. questions. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, yeah. I don't want to brag. <laughs> I, I, I'm not I'm not the best astrophotographer. I will never say that. Uh, but uh, I I did have one, and I think it's the only one one uh, astronomical picture of the day. So that that has to be my favorite picture because uh, and and actually I cheated. Uh oh. I, or you, or or you can call it the science experiment. <laughs> okay. okay. I can show it to you if you yeah. want. Yeah. But, show uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, Oh, but can I do like a PowerPoint share or how it's, do it's do on it? the bottom? I think it's a red computer. It says toggle screen sharing. Uh, okay. Toggle, toggle screen sharing. I'm very good at it. I'm 47 years old. I should be able to do this. Oh, you're still young. Don't worry. Uh, you're fine. I, I don't see the window. <laughs> entire screen <laughs> no yeah. i don't see it i you know you can you can look it up sorry about that i, yeah, I no, am, tell, tell not... me where it is and i can bring yeah. it up if you want um, so yeah it was i think an a pod in 2021 november 2021 video ulemans <laughs> november it was uh, the pac-man nebula also so I can Google it. Uh, maybe I can also Google it. Yeah. Back now. But anyway, the reason why I'm proud of that is uh, is that uh, I did a, I did um, like a narrow band image of the Pac-Man Nebula with my Edge HD uh, telescope. So that's about nine hours of data. Not super special, but uh, I got a nice Hubble palette picture of that uh, nebula. And then I also, I read up a little bit on what's going on inside that nebula. And there, were, there are a lot of newborn stars that are not visible in the visible light spectrum. Um, so I was searching a, a little bit on the internet and then I saw you have the Chandra X-ray Observatory, like a professional space-based uh, telescope that images the night sky or images the universe in X-ray. And they had like these newborn stars, they imaged them in the Pac-Man Nebula. And you had Spitzer, another space-based telescope that images in the infrared. Like the, we can also see, yeah, infrared. Wow. Oh, here we are. <laughs> wow. yeah, so, yeah, this is this is the picture. It's it's not it's not perfect, <laughs> but uh, what you see here is like I introduced uh, my, my uh, the Edge HD produced the narrow band pictures. I took away the stars using a Starnet plus uh, plus at the time. I think yep. we, we now have Starnet two, and um, and then I integrated the uh, pictures of the Chandra space based telescope and the infrared from the Spitzer space telescope. Now you can see like this broad spectrum kind of uh, view of the Pac-Man Nebula beyond what we can see with uh, with uh, with our telescopes. That's actually pretty. That cool. really that, that's really cool. So we, yeah. That is anyway, I should just stop talking now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a very nice, very great rendition of it. I love the starless and the stars in the middle. It looks great. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and especially if if you look at sorry. That's fantastic. I, I totally agree. This is a fantastic shot. Yeah, it's not only my shot, so that's why I said it's a little bit. It's a little bit uh, <laughs> like okay. fifty percent my okay, own and fifty percent. Okay. Uh, thank you, space-based telescopes. But uh, <laughs> what I, I find fascinating, for instance, that you you if you retake the picture, you can see like a dark cloud, which we that would be the mouth of the Pac-Man nebula, right? Yeah. Right. So if if we would look at that, that would be just dark. And I always assumed that that was would that that's just like that where the nebula ends. 
and like there's just a lot of space behind that nebula. But if you look at the Spitzer data, you see that entire mouth is covered, covered up. So actually there's a lot more ionized hydrogen gas inside that nebula than, we, than that we can see. Nice. It really opened up like, oh wow, we are we are only seeing this very small part of the of the of the universe with our telescopes. So exactly. Yeah, I, I was fascinated with with that. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Really cool. That is, that is really, really cool. So yeah, everyone's saying, whoa, how awesome. There you go. Send some yeah. nice clean shots. Oh, cool. yeah. Very, very Thanks worthy of the A Bob. So we we talked we talked yeah, a little bit about light pollution uh, here, Wido. Yeah. What is your what is your Bortle or SQM uh, level? Uh, yeah, if I, I, yeah. So uh, where I'm from, I'm I'm really uh, imaging from uh, from a city. So I'm in uh, I'm Bortle Bortle seven, Bortle eight, depending on the app you check. But that's a that's a red to white zone, I think. So, and in the Netherlands, the light pollution is actually pretty heavy. So um, I think you cannot go be below uh, Bordel class four in the Netherlands. So yeah. if you want to visit some dark skies, then uh, yeah, you have some in France and in Spain, there are still some really dark skies available. Um, but so yeah, it's, it's terrible. It's, uh, I don't know what to say. Yeah, I, I really, I really am grateful that there are some, uh, some, like tricks to still do astrophotography in this light polluted uh, sky. Yeah. And I think on the, on the one hand, that narrow band imaging, I think a lot of people who are in light polluted skies do aero, narrow band imaging. So that's great to have this high compressed uh, view of the nebulae. And I also think the software is getting better. So yeah. I never, I never dared to do a, like broadband uh, under city light polluted skies, but the during the last year i did some and i think like this uh, you have dynamic background extraction and grexpert and all these kind of things these these tools and picks inside they just keep keep on getting better and better i know so we, yeah. we were talking and, about uh, that actually, I, oh, yeah. sorry, we were talking about that behind the scenes and the guys that watch the show know about my telephone wires and issues and stuff like that so i don't have to go about <laughs> that again but i mean you know to your point on the software with the, just even the updates with wbpp forget about russ croman's ai stuff and all the you know yeah. all that kind of stuff that's coming out and Graxpert and all that i mean just wbpp from from pix insight is now starting to realize what's what's part of a star and what's not and um was able to now reject reject those lovely um uh, diffraction spikes that I've been getting only on the bright stars because of the telephone lines. So I mean, it was, your, your Saturn yeah. rings. Yeah, my yeah. Everything, every every bright star looked like Saturn. It was crazy. It's the same thing with um because Dan, mo the majority of us we use actual pick. Um, we use Pix Insight. I personally, I use Astral Pixel Processor majority. I do a big mix, yeah. and the same thing when you're um, these this new, the new software that's coming out, it is getting so much better and more helpful just with that dynamic background extraction. Be it within Pix Insight, and now APP is getting more improved. And we're not, you know, of course there's Graxpert and uh, Blur Exterminator, but things now are getting better because we so many of these programmers and designers they start understanding more and more people are doing this especially since the pandemic more and more people were purchasing yeah. telescopes oh, yeah. during the pandemic and getting more into it and getting and more to, and not just doing visual but then hopping over into you know photography and actual photography so now you have so much many more people getting involved so these developers are now saying you know we need to make our software better and you just have constant innovation. And it's so cool to see these improvements, especially for you know areas like you, yours, Dan, even mine. I'm in a Bortle 5, where oh, you can- Cry me a river, Eric, cry me a river. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. You know why is me? It's terrible but, Bortle 5. Yeah, oh very, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just wham. But it's just gotten so, but, this, but the software, no matter which one you use, 
Pix Insight or Azure Pixel Processor or uh, Cyril, for example. Cyril is another yeah. one. Uh, it's just gotten so much better, you know, yep. and that's been a benefit mm -hmm. for us all, you know. I, I was thinking about. I, I absolutely, I absolutely agree with that. And uh, I was thinking about it myself also. Like I started in 2016, and mm -hmm. I just used like Deep Sky Stacker for stacking. Mm -hmm. I yep. think that's that's more of the more like easy to use uh, stacking software tools when you just start out. Yeah, uh, and, and it's free. You just and, don't. and I did my post <laughs> process like the stack picture. I just imported it in Photoshop, and there were a lot of uh tricks people would also i i really love youtube by the way there are all kinds of like modules or new stuff that comes out it will be on youtube and as somebody will be talking about it so, <laughs> so I, I just learned to process in photoshop uh, did we, okay. i just yeah just spazzed just out buffering. for a second yeah, yeah uh, he's coming back i think yeah but the university of youtube is so right you know we'll wait for we know yep. to get back because I I know I'm for sure have learned so much more out of yep. YouTube. Yeah, here he's back. Hi. Yeah, and <laughs> I have sorry. with anything it's okay. No, no problem. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes when you're when we the, when we're dealing with long distances, this does happen sometimes, especially when you're on a live show. So, uh, I think this is uh, this is the distance from my uh, wireless uh, internet connection at the attic to my uh, server. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we, we have another we have another question here from Larry. We know Larry. For you. Uh, uh, and I and I actually have this question as well. Um, okay. You've been doing a lot of videos lately. Uh, regarding smart telescopes. I see you have two of them back there behind you right now. Uh, do you have a favorite? And do you uh, see them replacing, you know, any of your personal gear? Do you see them as a replacement for anything you're currently using more actively? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, good questions. And um, I, I think smart telescopes, they cater to a very specific uh, crowd of people. And for me, I was really into it. I, I, I got actually, I got, I got some emails from uh, ZWO and also Vaon is like, hey, uh, we have these new things and would you like to try them out? So that's uh, the honest uh, uh, thing to say. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I was also fascinated by them because uh, I'm not getting the same quality pictures uh, as compared to my uh, astrophotography rig with uh, like, a computerized equatorial mount, a refractor, apochromatic telescope, or an Edge HD. Um, but at the same time, it's so easy. They are wireless, they are lightweight. Uh, you don't need to have a lot of knowledge of astrophotography. So if you're just starting out and you don't want to put like the, the kind of time and effort in, we all do to yeah. like get really like into it and uh, it becomes a passion or even ob an obsession obsession yeah. depending on the person you ask i think <laughs> uh, <laughs> so i think a lot of people they can they can just like, if you do some naked eye naked eye stargazing you come home and you you think i want to see a little bit more of the night sky um instead of buying a good set of binoculars or instead of buying a visual telescope you can also get one of these guys yeah. like yeah. uh Vaughan vispera or c stars 50 or a dwarf 2. And I say I, the favorite, um, yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm all over the place with my thoughts on this, but uh, actually what I do, I, I use them to survive the winter. So yeah. from November till the end of February in the Netherlands, at least we have like almost always clouds with one or two hour breaks in between. And then I don't want to carry out my EQ6R Pro and Edge HD. And uh, by the time I get that all running, I don't have a, an observatory. So by the time I get that running, the clouds will ro have rolled it back in again. So, yeah. and with that being said, I would say the, the cheapest smart telescope is, of course, the Sea Star S50 and the Dwarf 2. And if you're into uh, Astro, if you want decent quality pictures, I would pick the Sea Star. Because it it has the apochromatic uh, triplet refractor telescope uh, with the 50 millimeter aperture, 250 millimeter focal length, and gives a little bit of a better resolution uh, picture as compared to dwarf. You don't agree? <laughs> no, no. I'm just you know I, I haven't I've you know what I haven't had as much experience with the um, 
Ah. The, I haven't even touched the dwarf yet, to be honest with you. So I, I, you know, I thought you were going to say the Vesper or the Stellina, uh, but uh, you know. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, maybe I should tell you. Yeah, but so my my thing. So you have the price range five hundred dollars, more or less. Yeah, compared to fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, because, yeah, I think also what CWO does really well, and there's also a lot of debate about this, of course, but they, they imported a lot of the things they developed in the ASI Air. They mm -hmm. put that also into their CSAR app. Yep. So yeah. if you are you know nothing about astrophotography or planetary or lunar imaging, you just, they have this lunar mode or they have this solar yep. imaging mode. You can just enter it, the telescope, it's an LPS mount, of course, so you can just put it down. You don't need to polar align it. You just click on, hey, I want to do, do some uh, moon gazing, and that thing will find the moon within a minute or two. Yeah. And I'm yeah, so so that's great. And when you want to do a look at some deep sky objects, you have a Stellarium-like virtual sky atlas. You can just click on an object, and it will just point and uh, and shoot. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's what, what's really awesome about the sea store and the dwarf too is more uh, of a generalized. Yeah. Uh, it's actually it's not a telescope. No. Go, no, oh, it's a little camera. Oh, it's a little... Oh, big, big revelation. The dwarf too is it's not, not a telescope. A telescope. <laughs> do you know what? Do you know what sensor <laughs> that the sea star uses? Sorry. Do you know what sensor the sea star uses? Yeah, I have to look it up, but this is like a small planetary uh, Sony IMX Starvis sensor. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah Starvis, but I'm not 100% sure which one. Um, yeah, we'd have to look that up. Yeah, you can check that. But, but yeah. yeah, I mean, you're, you're totally right. You know, um, you mentioned, you know, being in actual photography, you know, it being an obsession or, you know, an addiction or what have you. I consider, you know, me personally, I call this a lifestyle because it's, it's a total lifestyle change. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. it is a total I lifestyle agree. change. And uh, it's one for me, you know, even, you know, maybe my bank account may not agree with it, but, you know, they it's been it. one for been a lifestyle change for the better. <laughs> you know? it's, it's the 462. <laughs> so for case anyone's oh, it's wondering. Yeah, okay. it's 462. Yeah. 462. Okay. Yeah. And and um oh, we got we know he uh buffering again. Oh, no, he's there back. he is. <sighs> no, he's nope. he's coming back and forth. That's that's him. That's okay. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a 460. Yeah, it's the uh, IMAX 462 oh. in the. Uh, there we yeah, go. Back, We're back. So, and the, <laughs> Stel the Stellina is a bigger aperture, too. I did it like 80 millimeter in the Stellina. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, but the price also go goes up. So, you have $4,000 yeah. at your yeah. disposal. You can uh, get the, But the Stellina is actually, I, I would actually, be, you have the Vaunus Vespera if, you, if you're looking at like, like a nice in between kind of telescope that, that the telescope is about fifteen hundred dollars yeah and it does it, it it does have like also 50 millimeter millimeter aperture and 250 millimeter focal length but it also has this 585 mc sensor mm -hmm. so it has a little bit of a bigger um field of wide, view wide or field no sensor of. size yeah. i have to say so you get a bigger field of view as compared to the Sea Star. So it will easily fit uh, Orion Nebula. And what the Vaonis also has, but a lot of people are waiting for a mosaic mode in the Sea Star S50. No, it's yeah. not available yet, and they, the people know that it is already available in the ASI Air, for instance. So yeah. um, they are expecting it to be implemented. But so far, Vaonis has been the only company that has actually implemented mosaic and panorama mode. So what you can do is just, uh, I think, image up to three times or four times, I think three times the sensor size. So you can actually get these like three, four degree uh, field of view images cool. of the night sky. So that yeah. that's super cool. Yeah, I don't know how did how they did that. Yeah, but well, um, I'm, I'm, but at the what? same time, you're limited. Eh? You're, you, you're taking 10 second exposures. Yeah. You're doing lucky imaging. So... Um, yeah, you, you you can't reproduce what you can produce with a long exposure picture and a computerized equatorial mount. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm curious you have, to you have see. some field rotation and everything, that kind of stuff. So, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm curious to see, and I've yet to see any pictures. So if, if any have come out, uh, you're going to have to excuse me. I've been working my butt off here, but I apologize. But I'm <laughs> curious to see the first images out of that, um, the Celestron Origin 
the the um, Rasa smart telescope, oh, the six inch right, Rasa. Right. Oh yeah, um, six inch Rasa. I don't know yeah, anyone that's bought one, purchased one, asked about them, whatever, because I mean, at what I, point I know, do I, these I, smart I, telescopes get <laughs> too large yeah. to be a portable right. kind of thing? You know what I mean? What, what point did it get mm -hmm. to be too big? Yeah, they call it a home observatory for yeah. a reason, I think. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, now, we've so talked, rest, we talked a little bit. We talked a little bit about budget, Lido, and you know, and trying to be yeah. more budget conscious. Because I'm going to throw a scenario at you. Oh no! Since we've been talking okay. about budget, <laughs> if you yeah, and I, I had this written down, if you have if you have a budget of say fifteen thousand dollars U.S. or say fourteen thousand euros, fifteen thousand yeah. to get an entire your dream rig, your dream rig, what? would that be more had money no, no 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 dream no, no. rig no, no. is no, no. more no, no. money your wife, you know, like, me, like with my wife she's like this is your budget you're not going a penny over it this is it so oh. say fifteen thousand or fourteen thousand euros because that's kind of about the same maybe okay. a little bit more where Very difficult would you be <laughs> One rig? Is, yeah, one rig. <laughs> only one. Only one. <laughs> I, think, I think I would I would first spend it on a very good uh, computerized equatorial mount. Yep. I think okay. I, I have been, yeah. been saying this from the beginning, like you have to put your money where your mount is, something yep. like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I really believe that. So um, um, you want, is, you is want your only competitor to be, to be your spy. Sorry? Yeah, was there a particular amount that you would that you have your that you would say you would love to have, or would be? You I don't know. I never be? looked at the, that kind of budget, but uh, okay. I, I guess <laughs> if you <laughs> ate something like that on a, okay. a nice. Okay. Uh, but how much is that? Uh, it's, it's about fifty four hundred uh, US, so oh, maybe 5, about forty five hundred. Still have ten. I still have ten thousand. Yeah, you still have ten thousand. Uh, so. Okay, then then we need uh, like what is the biggest uh, camera sensor, uh, CMOS sensor available? Sixty two hundred, I think, something like that. Yeah, full frame. The yeah, full yeah. frame. <laughs> you go, you, you go yeah. Moravian with the you know medium format if you want. You know. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but okay, we'll, we'll, like stick with, we'll stick with the sixty two hundred. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and then for, for a telescope, it's really tricky. It depends a little bit on what you're aiming to, to, to shoot, I think, right? That's true. Yeah, That's exactly. True. Exactly. Yeah. So, and what would you prefer so, more to do? You know, is it more wide or is it more long focal length or is it somewhere ooh, in the middle? Yeah, I've been all over the place. Um, I, I do like it when you have these, the, I do like a long focal length uh, uh, picture of the, of, of the night sky. They, okay. they, they just, I, I, but I think that is because I have owned a refractor already. So I, if you have like a 500 or 600 millimeter refractor, you are first amazed by like the total object of the Rosette Nebula or the Orion Nebula or, you know, you can take it all into one picture. And then at one point, you'll gravitate more towards tinier object, objects, I think, and you want to get some more detail. Uh, for instance, if you're imaging the heart nebula, that's great, but you want uh, Merlot. What is it? I don't know the number 15, exactly. 15. Yeah, Merlot, yeah, the heart yeah. of the heart nebula, yeah. So, so it, it really, I, I would have a very difficult choice buying just one telescope. I would just buy a very expensive, expensive mount that can track within 0 0.1, 0 0.2 accu accuracy there and then go. switch telescopes. Yeah, <laughs> done. There you go. So that may end up being, you know, you get the great mount, but you get maybe you keep your edge eight, perhaps, or you yeah. go to a nine and a quarter, yeah. and then you get a nice refractor, and then you pair you maybe that sixty two hundred and maybe a twenty six hundred. Yeah, you have fifteen. Yeah, you have like that fourteen, yeah. fifteen thousand dollar budget. Yeah. So that basically, yeah. so what that gets at is, is that my point that I'm trying to make is, is that there's no silver bullet, right? Absolutely. There's really no silver bullet when it comes to this this hobby and natural photography. But if you do have a budget, you know, you can build maybe not just one, but maybe two nice setups 
for yeah, yeah. for yourself and be and then yeah. be totally yeah. cool with it because now you have made you actually, but, hey, now yeah. have world. super super a good point you made because I, I was thinking when you said that i was thinking about the different seasons we have so for mm -hmm. instance uh, we are now uh, entering spring and now i'm really eager to to get my edge hd with the 0.7 reducer up and running because i want to capture those tiny galaxies Yep. And yes. then uh, they are 20 million light years away. But when you come for, to June, uh, July, way in the south, uh, in the northern hemisphere at least, uh, <laughs> yeah. and we, we can have we have these big uh, nebulae, and it's super nice to have this wide field ref uh, refractor, apochromatic refractor, to get uh, like a big part of the night sky that is really like the elephant trunk nebula, or uh, you want to see this loop, that kind of stuff. Uh, in one picture and uh oh shit no you're good am i still okay. you're good you can see i see myself by my mouth moving and uh... <laughs> no, you're, you're good it just it anyway, just cut it down it for a second you're fine on the season. yeah yeah now now right. one thing that even shan just mentioned uh and you can even do this with your edge with the edge eight and was one reason why i really like the schmitz so much is that they're so versatile because you could get a hyperstar yeah. and you do have the reducer yeah. and you can go F10 and go fully native or and also get a Barlow and go F20 or F30 mm -hmm. for planetary, yeah. which is mm -hmm. really, really cool. So um, one thing, and I, if I, if you don't mind, I will um, share and show because I, like I said, I also have the same setup as you have. What what camera do you use? Do you pair with your Edge Eight? Uh, I did I did use the ASI sixteen hundred uh, for a couple of years, but uh, I think it's now uh, out of commission, right? More so or less. So I would say like the ASI twenty six hundred, something like that, that kind of sensor to okay. get a uh, like APS-C. It depends also again on the budget you have. But, yeah, uh, but no. But what are you currently I, using? I, what, I, what I was curious is what are you currently using now with your with your Edge? I, I'm using, uh, the, but exactly like you said, like if I want to do some uh, deep sky astrophotography, I would go with my ASI 2600 Mono Pro um, okay. or a similar uh, sensor from uh, another brand that would be fine too, I think. Um, okay. And But but yeah, you can also do some planetary, like you said. So uh, then yeah. maybe I would, uh, would use like uh, a small, like six, seven, eight uh, planetary camera or 585. Uh, yep. To capture Jupiter, to capture Mars. So I would yep. switch cameras depending on the on the object you want to capture. And I, I never sense. used the Hyperstar. I still, when I switch to uh, uh, a wide field uh, astrophotography, I I just take my refractor, my 500 millimeter refractor, out of the out of the, out of the closet, uh -huh. and uh, I use that. I know it's it's a longer this f f six. I'm at the f six there instead of what is the Hyperstar. Will get mm -hmm. you to F2, I think. Yep. Yes. Yep. Sure. Will. Then, then your camera will be in front of your uh, telescope. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that and that may be a bit tricky to get all of that working. It it, it can be done, of course, but uh, yeah. Of course. Yep. Yep. Because <laughs> uh, here, I'll show you with you my screen here because I have the same setup. Cool. I have something similar. So this is this is just a raw of the Medusa Nebula. It's a planetary. And mm -hmm. so this is great. And this is with the, and this is with a 533 sensor. So you have that much smaller chip, but it seems, uh, but it gives you that more narrow field. So you can really almost get even bit, a bit more reach, right? Then uh, because one thing that I noticed with the 2600, because I have that as well, is that with it, with the using the reducer, it cuts your image circle down so much mm -hmm. right so it's like you're going down to like a 24 millimeter or something like that so it's not quite so you start getting some cuts and stuff like that but i wanted to just share this because i like you have that have a very similar setup and i think you know it's a great pairing and when you go something like uh this guy, if I get the luminance here. Yep, here we are. Like you get the Crocs eye. You know, I love the reach of the of Schmidt Casabrains. Yeah. 
they're so cool. They're so versatile. And you can get, let me see if I zoom it in a little more. So you can see so much more of this stuff. Um, and so, yeah, I was just kind of curious because you have a, I was just curious on your take um, on your, you know, your setup because we have very similar, because I watch your videos and we have very similar, very similar yeah. stuff as I do. That's all. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I agree with you, uh, Eric. So uh, I, I really like the, the, the focal length reach of the of the like the 1500 millimeter focal length or I think even beyond that when you have a nine and a quarter it's it adds it adds that little bit extra sometimes you get a little yeah. bit of that higher resolution image as compared yeah. to uh, buying maybe uh, what is it like I think like 100 yeah I'm, I'm always thinking in millimeters but like a six inch or seven inch uh, apochromatic refractive telescope. I think they are about 750, 800 millimeters, something like that. Depends on what you Depends a little yeah. bit, right? Depends there is on a which final, one, yeah. like, I think, Dan, you mentioned that also. There is a final, like, focal length at, at which point these refractors are just getting so very heavy and also very expensive because of the glass you yep. that, that needs to be produced. And then this, I think it is like, very, very common that to then just switch to a more economical uh, modified Schmidt Cassegrain telescope like the Edge HD. Yep. You yeah. will just get you will get that extra focal length, and you will, of course, yeah, you will have be imaging at f7 or something like that. But uh, if you have that good uh, e computerized equatorial mount that can track accurately, yep. Then that's that's not necessarily an issue. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And also, you you because I don't know what what kind of arc, what kind of skies you do, you have there, yeah, but uh, I if five. I look at the metal, I, 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 yeah. no, 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 I, I don't mean in, in terms of light pollution. I mean in terms of uh, turbulence and everything. Yeah. So oh, when yeah. I look at, uh, for instance, Meteo Blue, uh, if yeah. I look at the arc seconds uh, a number in the Netherlands, it's, it's almost always above one. So 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.5. I wish no, I no, wish I was one. <laughs> Sorry. I wish I was at one. I'm I'm like yeah. two and a half, three at best. <laughs> yeah. You know. So, so I, I'm I'm questioning a lot of the times when I'm imaging because I have then that setup is it brings me to 0 0.5 or 0 0.6, uh, an image the imaging scale with the edge HD and the yep. 0 0.7 reducer. <laughs> But then at the same time, I have an arc uh, second uh, sky of one or 1 1.4, 1 1.5. Right. Yeah, then I'm, I'm thinking about binning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like, maybe I need to create a super pixel because I will not see more resolution. I'm, I'm just fighting the sky then. Yeah, anyway, exactly. Yeah. So Let's I know. Uh, yeah. Mr. B There's said uh, Hyperstar 8 is. Is a thousand bucks getting into range of some very good refractors? Yeah, um, it yeah. is, and it's true. I mean, and that's yeah. one of my what that's one of my arguments about you know all these you know dropping the focal length for sensitivity kind of thing. You know, with these hyperstars and reducers and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, that's why I. I'm, but number one, I'm just too darn lazy to change these things. I can't. I can't. You know, I would rather yeah. spend the extra money. That's why I have a red cut. That's why I have a 400 FRI 400. That's why I have a um, five inch astrophysics. And also if I want to go kind of crazy, we were talking about aperture fever before, right? I got my 18 yeah. inch obsession that I could drag out if I want to do visual. I, I did some planetary imaging through that 18 inch obsession, which I just did it to see if I could do it. And for me, yeah. for one time with my niece who was five at the time, she wanted to see yeah. Saturn. So I said, let's see what happens if I put the camera in. And it turned out to be an okay picture. It's not, it was not it's, it's no, nothing great, but I mean, it, you could definitely see the two rings and, you know, it was only about, yeah. I don't know, 500 frames. It was a real quick one minute shot. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, but I mean, it turns yeah, out to be- yeah. Yeah, when you when you turn on you turn the servo cat on or whatever you're tracking, yeah. it doesn't matter if you're you know, you know, your your alt as or not, you know, if you're alt as or equatorial, because all you're doing is taking a little part of that chip when you're dealing with uh when you're dealing with planetary, right? Yeah, and also again the planetary the, the, the astronomical scene conditions, they they are varying a lot, eh? 
Oh, so yeah. uh, I have yeah. I have been trying to image uh, Jupiter and Mars with the, the with the Edge HD, so not quite the resolution you uh, you uh, have used then. No. But uh, I already saw that, you know, when when the skies are clear and these planets are exactly at opposition, so closest to Earth, you can end up with 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 some decent, uh, um, um, yeah, like some decent resolution pictures, even with uh, with an eight inch telescope. And on other nights when the seeing is mediocre or or even bad, then it doesn't matter how much your focal length is. Um, you're just going to, I think it's called empty ma magnification, right? Mm -hmm. So you will will have like the focal length and the resolution of your your uh, astro rig. Yep. But yeah, you you will just see a blurry image of the of the planet because of uh, of just the, the bad sky conditions. Oh yeah, so, I mean you know yeah. literally you know even when when Jupiter is in New York at you know at its highest, right? Um, on some nights you could actually see the waves of the heat of the atmosphere just making it just like wobble all over the place and that's <laughs> and that's why it's super important if you have really bad seeing conditions and you're trying to do planetary you want to get the camera with the, the, the highest frame rates you can possibly get because there is so little of a chance of you get you may throw an auto stacker and if, for those of you that yeah. know auto stacker there's this nice, nice little graph right you may just go oh, yeah down to the bottom and you're only good with like 20 percent of like you know an one hour video right so um you know you you, you may you, you that's really lucky so if you especially if you're having really bad um really bad seeing conditions yeah yeah Why and uh auto stack at four is out what's that so there's an there's a new auto stacker version out okay. so we used to work with auto stack at three yeah there's four now but uh, it's now four. So for people who like planetary imaging, you, I think it, it got an upgrade like two months ago, something like that. Oh man, okay, gonna have to check that out. Yeah, it's a it's a Dutch developer, so I like to. Uh, ah, there you go. You know, you know. <laughs> to it, him. Hey, even in the U.S., Auto Stacker is the program that I turn people on to when they're doing planetary because there is a lot of. Like, you know, like you were saying before, there's a lot of YouTube um, demonstrations, at least on three and even two, you can find them out there. Um, you know, a lot of, lot of uh, support for auto stacker out there on uh, on the, uh, yeah. the University of YouTube. Yeah, I, so. think that, I think if you look at uh, planetary uh, capturing and processing in general, there is a lot of free software available. Yeah, so you, you have yeah. auto stacker and the uh, Reggie Stack 6 and... Yep. Uh, Fire capture, fire capture, they're all free. Yeah. yeah. So a lot, a lot of kudos to the people who uh, have been putting their like this, their how do you can say that all their time, blood, sweat, and tear, tears into developing that stuff. Absolutely. I, I, I often see, and I did it myself. You post a video and you say, "Hey, I captured this or I captured that." Actually, actually, we 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 captured it because we are standing on the shoulders of uh, incredible technological uh, innovations and software developers. Mm -hmm. so the time to uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> absolutely all that. Yeah. Now, um, I'm trying to see if there was any questions, but if not, I'll go to one of mine. Um, what has been um, your most challenging target? Image to image so far Ooh. now yeah the challenging target uh, to get it right so yeah, my, yeah. I, I, my, my most challenging target to get it right is the was it's been maybe a bit strange but for me it was the eagle nebula okay so at 50, at 52 degrees uh, latitude we have the the eagle nebula pretty low on the horizon and um I remember because one of my first associations as a kid with astrophotography was when I saw the Hubble Space Telescope missions. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. um, you know, it was it was great. We had the space shuttle and at first the Hubble Space Telescope was out of collimation and they needed yep. to I remember. repair missions. <laughs> and then finally we got these sharp images. And one of them, yeah, of course, it's the most famous image, the Pillars of Creation. And yeah. I, I remember downloading that when I was in my 20s uh, on my uh, computer. And it actually took like, I had a 64 kilobyte per second modem, 
So I needed to download that for about five to ten minutes, <laughs> and I use it as a screen saver. <laughs> now, okay, I this yeah. really tells how old I am. I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, listen, I, 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 we we are, I, I think you know not for nothing. I think you're the youngest person on the show right now. So just so you know that. So 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 um, at 47, I think we all got you beat. But um, you know, I, I remember those modems, man. Those I, my first yeah. modem was an Atari. Uh, what was it? The uh, twenty thirty. What the big block modem? The the, the ninety six hundred uh, yeah. board modem. That, yeah, you know, yeah, one good. Wow. The one you use with your phone, and you drop yeah. your phone. Drop and you your phone and you on it. Yeah, there. you pick it up. You hear a fax yeah. machine, yeah. and you yeah. put it down you into the thing. Phone yeah. in, right? You needed yeah. to literally, literally phone in, and you got this noise, yeah. and then and you, you would sit there. <laughs> I got, I got to log on to AOL 3.0. I got to do it, and I got to. Yeah. And, and oh, I, hold on, I'm gonna go dial. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'm gonna get a drink. I'm gonna come back, and I'll have the home screen up. So, so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so we yeah, saw. Okay, yeah. so that was you, that you, so you're saying that you is that making you up the most difficult, but the emotionally uh, for me, it was an emotionally thing, an emotional thing to see like you can capture it from your backyard. <laughs> and the pillars of creation are tricky. So the Eagle Nebula is a pretty bright nebula. You can capture it already with your uh, apochromatic telescope, but to get a decent resolution picture of the pillars of creation. That takes like maybe 12 or 15 hours of narrow band imaging if you want to do it really good. So that was yeah. kind of tricky with me because I had short nights in the summer. So I needed to do this across multiple nights. And I, I, got, I got a picture and I, I'm really happy with it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh oh, we have uh, another question here from English Fires. How do you keep motivated with all the, with, how did you keep motivated with all the clouds last year? True. Um, I didn't. I sometimes I get pulled my hair out. Now, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> no, because when you're in the, to the hobby for five, six, seven, or eight years, like I, I think I think I'm I've been doing it since 2016, and then at one point, of course, you have collected enough data to go back to uh, reprocessing your images. So that's something that I think every astrophotographer does, and also I do that. And that's actually pretty interesting because you can see how much progress you made every year. So, and, and also the software is getting more, we already talked about that, but if I look at my pictures I took in 2017 of the horse head and the flame nebula and some rosette pictures, um, I reprocessed some of those in 2022 when we had really bad uh, patch of like months of uh, clouds. And then you're just amazed, like, oh, how much more detail can I pull out of the same data um, two or yeah. three years apart? And uh, something I was completely happy with two or three years ago, um, I can do a much better job now. So that, that, yeah, that keeps me motivated. Yeah. I remember that was a big thing when Blur Exterminator came out. You're Everybody's going yeah. back to find old data and use Blur Exterminator yeah. and yep. see how good. How much better? Yeah, it scares me a bit. It does scare me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're not the only one, Weedo. It does. You know, a lot of people that come on the show, even though they say that it's part of the the evolution of the you know yeah. of the software, right? Because you know that that's what it is. So you know, we go back to the yeah. day, and and then I'm probably not outdating you by a lot, but I remember when I was actually. Yeah. When did you start doing imaging, Weedo? Uh, I think exactly at the right time, like 2016. Okay, so, so you, you got to it. I mean, I mean, you got to it very, you know, re, you know, within the last eight years, ten years. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was self-guiding on stars, moving telescopes, kind of on yeah. on film. And I remember the. I, I bring this up every once in a while because you know sometimes people get a little kick out of it. Um, there was the first guiding program that came out. It was called Guide Dog. Right, it was called guide. There was dog. something uh, predating PhD two. Oh boy, this is this is ten years or f five years before PhD no. two came out, and it's called guide dog, and it was the most annoying piece of garbage because every time it lost a guide star, instead of getting a nice little bing bing bing, you get whoa whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and, 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 and you couldn't turn it off. You couldn't turn it off. There was no way to turn it off. So every time you you, you were out, 
Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> and it never worked. It never worked. I mean, look at the pixels on these. The, the chip was like the size of like of like this little pen point right here. That's how big the chip was. And and, and you know what? You were losing the guard star literally like every minute. I mean, it was just like God, and it was just bad. And it was now that you got PhD two, you got multiple star guiding, you got all these lovely things out that kind of help you. And yeah. and in all fairness, I mean, look and take a look at you know the addition of harmonic mounts, right? Well, you know they're very very torque driven and they're pretty precise. Even when yeah. people like to talk about you know periodic error and stuff, but you know. Yeah, you can guide that stuff out, right? So, I mean... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was also thinking, like, uh, yeah. First of all, then, you are a hero, of course. Eh? When you, you, I, was, I, was I was also thinking about... I, I said, like, I, I've entered it at the correct uh, time because when I think about my 1980s as a child, oh. we had a Commodore 64 or something like that. I mean, we were, we were playing <laughs> yeah. uh, with a computer that had... It had 64 kilobits of uh, internal memory, something like that, with a data recorder and cassettes um, and a 16-color screen right, well. um, and analog camera. So, okay, now we are getting back. Oh, to he's breaking out. Data. He's breaking point into this part of death or something. So, he's breaking stuff out. So this is, I got to say thank you to Jason Pellegrini because we were talking about this on the show and I was going back to the 70s and 80s and we were thinking about... Oh God! I remember playing on this thing, and it was it was pretty bad. But I was said, you know. But here you go. So this is wow. the Timex Sinclair One Thousand, and oh this has God. this oh. has the additional oh. RAM module wow. of a yeah. whopping sixteen kilobytes of RAM in here, and <laughs> it just yeah. slides. <laughs> right onto the back right there and he updated it with a an rca out for video a headphone <laughs> jack for your ear and he's he kind of made a little power supply out of it yeah. so i could plug it in anywhere so i said i said oh, oh man he's God. like i got one and it goes back to the day this is how old this thing is this goes back to the day so if you remember those tvs that you had right you had like mm -hmm. a um a I don't know if anybody remembers this, a box in the back of your TV that you slipped up and down for TV or video. And uh, <laughs> some of them, you could change the channel two or three, wherever you are. And this has the little switch here that tells you channel two or channel three, which one are you going to be on? <laughs> and, and most of us in the US use channel three because two was what, ABC or whatever at the time? Oh, but, yeah. Yeah. But um, no, but thank no. you to Jason Pellegrini to, to updating this. I still have yet to plug it in, but um, it's a really cool thing to have. <laughs> oh man! Right, there you go. Old uh, computers. There, there you go. go. There it is. So another um, a follow up on that question that we were just having um, as far as your most challenging being, you know, you're at that at 52 degree latitude. Um, where ideally you know where would be your your ideal like say dark sky um location if you can go somewhere dark sky um either in anywhere in the world um where would it where would it be to go after you know that ideal target that you really really want to go after uh, okay yeah i i would every kind of broadband target i mean if you have dark skies that helps so much <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anywhere well, where shoot, I can do broadband. <laughs> broadband. I want to do broadband. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the modem, by the way. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Anywhere picture. where I can do LRGB. Uh, I just it, want to get out of the light pollution. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been thinking about that. And I actually, I have been building like a wireless rig. Dan was uh, talking about a little yep. bit because... Yep. Um, like after getting an Edge HD and the EQ6R Pro, I was thinking like, hey, um, um, should I build an observatory in my backyard? Because that that is probably the, the next step for a lot of folks who think about, hey, I don't want to spend that half hour building my rig. But I, I'm just, I'm, I, I didn't go through with it because in the Netherlands, we have these like light polluted uh, cloudy skies often. And I, ha I have actually been building this, uh, this wireless uh, rig uh, to get out, to get to uh, dark, and be—I uh, think for me it would be like 
in the middle of France, they have some border pass one, two skies. Um, also in Spain, um, they have some very nice observatories in the south of Spain. They are two kilometers high. So that's about, what's it, one and a half uh, mile, uh, 1500 miles, something like that. No. Okay. Yeah, anyway, yeah, just yeah, up uh, yeah. less atmosphere yep. <laughs> to yeah, shoot yeah. from. And they have like Bortle 1, Bortle 2 uh, skies without any uh, cities or villages in uh, like like a 50 kilometers kilometer radius. I would really love to travel there, travel there this summer. And I, I once went to Greece and I, I experienced like a uh, Bortle 1 sky there. Uh, it was just just close to the beach, and you could see the Milky Way rising in the south in the summertime. And I could actually visually see everything and uh, the thousands of stars that are visible. Yeah. I would love to go to places like that. I mean, uh, yeah. And where exactly on Earth? I mean, I I I don't necessarily would be in Chile. I I think it would be like too hard in like you want to go as high as possible right but at, at one point it gets really cold and chilly yeah <laughs> cold chilly no, can't maybe breathe you know. yeah not much oxygen <laughs> not much oxygen there you not know. Much, much oxygen. Yeah, yeah 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 speaking so of chile point, in spain is have you ever tried any of the um remote um telescope services like say or are you so interested wild. in trying those out like a telescope live or anything like I would. that yeah yeah I, I i never try did you actually i did didn't try it out myself because i really like the experience of uh i i, I will always say this to myself but in the, in the back of my mind i always have this idea of i have to try it out sometime especially during yeah. winter it's really really hard when you have like mm -hmm. three or four months of clear sky of, of cloudy skies I often think, hey, I should really get uh, some time on uh, on these remote observatories. And uh, but it's part of the experience you will miss, of course. Eh? It's like for me, it's also a little bit of a personal thing. Like you build up your telescope, uh, I agree. Uh, rig, I agree. You wait until it gets dark, and uh, you want to go imaging, but it's still twilight. <laughs> yep. And then finally, yeah. you have that clear, that, that clear dark sky or or light blue sky in my uh, my situation. And then the, the first picture rolls in, and you can aim your telescope e everywhere you like. I really like that, like that personal, like backyard astrophotography experience. Yep. And you would, yeah, you would yeah, miss that all that. that. You would, yeah, I, I like to physically go out and do that and also experience all the ups and downs that come with it by like uh, broken USB cables. And, uh, uh, things why, why things is, just see, stopping to running. work for no reason. And I worked like the day exactly. before, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. so, yeah. Yeah. you know, to your, yeah, to your point, like, I, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. You have sometimes you have these hard for hard pictures i think you call it right yep like you had a lot of uh you, you had to battle against the skies and uh, your rig wasn't doing well in it and finally you got you got everything solved and you ended up with that picture you wanted that that gives me yeah so much more like emotion i think uh, as compared to it does it does because you know you sit there you sit there and you thing. say you know what i put the time and effort into this shot and i made this the way i want it and and it's yeah. mine. It's mine. I didn't, you know, I, and to your point, I, I joined Telescope Live. We did a Southern Sky Challenge because, you know, a lot of the times um, people from, you know, our latitude, we don't get a chance to to go to Chile or go to get the uh, Tarantula or the Dragons of Arrow or, or uh, you know, Centaurus A and all that kind of stuff. So you kind of want to get these kind of things. So I joined Telescope Live. Uh, back when we did that and you know to your point you know i've i, I haven't used it since then and uh, somehow I've, I've i've literally uh racked up and you oh you can't see it um hold on a second uh, you we've racked up hold on a second i'll just do this real quick there we go oh 609 oh, credits um, over the you past four out. years so i don't know what i'm gonna do with them i'm probably gonna do it as a as a giveaway but i mean it's like cow, i mean it, it, it's, it's <laughs> out of control of so you know and, and and actually the plan has gone up twice in price since i joined it it used to be 17 dollars a month now it's up to 24 a month but um i just saw that now so i'm like hmm <laughs> but but you know it's uh you know it's it's i mean for 609 credits you could get a lot of data a lot of data 
you get a lot of data. Yeah, that was you a, know, there, it, there, there are some st stuff you can do with it then. Like sometimes you have a comet and, it, and then it's just passing in front of a famous galaxy yeah. or a kind of a region that is really yeah. interesting to observe. Uh, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Maybe that's that's an, an idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and we did we did it with the uh, tarantula nebula last. And I'm going to throw this out there. I don't know if he's in the chat, but but Sean Nielsen entered it um, for the the processing data from Visible Dark, and uh, I think he got second place. <laughs> So, so <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. kind of throw that at him every now and then. Somebody else beat him. I forget who beat him, but <laughs> I think it was Mark Ellis. I think it was Mark Ellis that beat him. I think, if I remember right, yeah. it was about yeah, four years ago. Right. 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 Yeah, you will end up with uh, incredible data, probably. Yeah. when you and, uh, and you uh, don't need a lot things. either. You, all you need is like, you know, yeah. two hours per filter because they're in such pristine skies. It's like. Yeah. And you know the exactly. best equipment, the best cameras, and the best everything. The plane waves and yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, not for nothing. Even a, even a talk one hundred and six with an FLI camera. I mean, that's you know, you know. <laughs> but then at, at one that's point it. you just say like, my, my, I have some family and friends, and some people really really are interested in astrophotography, but a lot of others aren't. And then they, they always say, why don't you just download the James Webb Hubble Space Telescope pictures? Or why don't you just, I mean, yeah. space-based like, telescope in the end, they, they, they will produce the highest quality data for you. And, yeah, you know what, you know, uh, you know I, I, I just yourself, tell them, you know, I literally the tell them, I literally exactly. tell them, I say, hey, hey, you know what? Have you seen the James Webb pictures? Have you seen those spikes? Have you seen the warping? I mean, they can't even take a picture right in focus, you know? So, I so, you know, you know, so <laughs> they won't know the difference. It's okay. <laughs> I, I, I pointed out that uh, the diffraction stars or the, the diffraction spikes on the James Webb Space Telescope, it, it, yeah, some people love them, but uh, I'm yeah. really, I, I don't, I don't. So I no. pointed that out, uh, but uh, it costed me only subscribers when I did. So, because <laughs> uh, Beatrice, because Beatrice is even asking, we know, he's like, do you like Newtonians? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, 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 I Don't worry. If anyone's going to lose them. subscribers, it's going to be this channel. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There go another fifty. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, Newton. I, I, they are everybody. Uh, if you if you're talking about refractors, there's always that uh, that two three persons that say, okay, you need to buy a Newtonian because uh, you get a bigger aperture, uh, uh, good focal length, an f5 uh, ratio telescope or f4, and uh, it's cheaper. So what are you even doing with these uh, apochromatic refractor telescopes? And I understand what they are saying, and at the same time, I, I you know. You have to, the collimation, uh, the, spine, the spider vein in front of the Newtonian that gets you the refraction spikes. I agree. Uh, the weight, also more more weight. You need to store it somewhere inside your house. Yeah, some people have the room, others don't. I, I think it's a personal uh, it is. A personal decision you need to take. And uh, if you're having fun, then it's great, you know? Yeah. But, uh, and, yeah you know, I'm, I I'm personally always... like, like, lightweight small uh, apochromatic refractors uh, i like them a little bit better than uh, than the newtonians uh, but yeah anyway yeah, no, i'm, I'm yeah. definitely a fan i'm with you there i'm definitely a, fan, a refractor guy um you know and that, that i've been that and that's why that's why I, I actually stepped in a little bit of good luck getting that ap scope uh but a friend of mine had wow. two of them and uh I saw it sitting under his couch for about six years and it's still pristine in the case it's never even seen first light. I'm like, what do you do with this? He's like, well, I was thinking about selling it. I wasn't going to, but if you want it, you could buy it. I said, really? I said, yeah. You mean I don't have to wait seven and a half years for a telescope? So, so he's like, he's like, no, you can have it right now. We'll pay it off. I said, okay. So I took it and, uh, you know, yeah. that, a great great beautiful scope i just had to wait six months for the uh the flattener because he was using it only for yeah. visual so he wasn't an astrophotographer right. so uh, so he was just a visual person and uh and it's one of those modular ap like you could take it and you put it in a little box like this big you could put it on a on a, on a plane or whatever if you wanted to or can use it as a carry-on bag you know so it's that small so you could do it in three different pieces it's cool yeah. 
So let me ask this also, because um, you know we're the the eclipse is coming next month. You know, it's really going through the U.S. and we have a lot of talk right now about solar imaging. Yeah. Uh, do you do 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 you are you interested in doing any solar imaging? Um, do you do any solar imaging with your setup right now or anything like that? Or are you yeah, interested in doing something? If like you're that? inviting me to come over for to watch the solar eclipse, I would be interested. <laughs> <laughs> come on <There> down. <laughs> you know, in the US, you had like two or three, or how many solar eclipses? Yeah, we've had two years? like within we've the past, what, seven years? 2017, we had the annual. Uh, 2017, we I, had I'm the um, total. And then we had an yeah. annular. And then, uh, yeah. and then we got the uh, the next. But the next one we have yeah, is like I'm going to be dead. So. <laughs> yeah, the next one's like in seven after like this, and then like seven years. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be dead. I I have, I have a better <laughs> chance of seeing the next Venus transit than than uh, seeing the next solar eclipse in the U.S. Ah, okay. <laughs> so. yeah. Okay, yeah, I would. I I, uh, I did some solar uh, imaging, uh, Eric. I, I really, I really have. I love that as well. And I think I think people are are questioning like, hey, uh, how should I image that uh, upcoming solar eclipse? Mm -hmm. I see a lot of videos about that. Like, should I uh, use my regular DSLR with a solar filter, or should I go for one of these uh, smart telescopes uh, you see behind me? And um, so, yeah, I think it's great to do to do some solar imaging. I, I've actually been testing out different kinds of setups on the sun and. Um, yeah, you can go from affordable to super expensive also, of course. So uh, I did some uh, solar, I, I put, of course, a solar filter in front of my uh, refractor telescope to look at some sunspots. Um, but you can also go and get like a day star quark chromosphere, that kind of stuff. And then you see all these awesome solar flares yep. and uh, all that uh, activity in the, what is it? The... Uh, the chromosphere of the yep, sun. The so yeah, yeah, the chromosphere, the prominence, yeah. I prominence, saw somebody. Uh, somebody did. I, I, and so, yeah. So I think it's a, a nice, quirk. like, it's, it's a nice extra you you would get into when you already are into deep sky and uh, planetary imaging or something. You want something extra? Then the solar is definitely a very nice uh, way to go. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm interested. I'm gonna I'm gonna I think what I'm gonna I'm looking. On buying, and well, I need a new lens anyway for my camera. For my my what what I use for the show, I use the uh, the Canon 60 Mark II, not the good one, not the Mark One, the the the, the 60 Mark II, which no one buys for astrophotography because of the noise problem. But um um the um I'm looking for a new lens for this to shoot the solar eclipse, and I'm looking at the yeah. like four to five to six. 100 millimeter kind of lens range because I need a good zoom lens for my my camera as well because I don't have one I have like a I don't know 50 to 200 or something you know yeah. which is okay but you know when I'm on vacation you know you want to take some pictures it's going to be doing dual double duty right so if I want to throw this out to everybody you know what would you consider a decent uh maybe yeah. a diff decent lens to do this solar eclipse with yeah yeah, I, I got a I, I got a Tamron one hundred to four hundred. Okay. Is Tamron maybe it it has another brand I think in the US. Yeah, I know Tamron. I know Tamron. Yep. It's also Tamron. Yep, okay. Tamron. Yep. Yeah, I, it's it's like decent quality and uh, like it's like price quality thing. Yep. Um, and I, what I noticed then is because the, of course you have then uh, with I have a, like a crop sensor, so I yeah, get to I, I got the full not four hundred millimeters, yeah. but I think five six hundred millimeters. Uh, but then you have a you have an issue because uh, you need a very sturdy mount. As I did some uh, I did some test shots uh, last week. Okay. Uh, with the Tamron 400, and it was uh, like border. What's the what is it? How do you call that in uh, English? <laughs> uh, like four bow four. Like the, okay. the wind was. It was we had we had these wind gusts. Yep. And yep. my my normal tripod was shaking, 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 and I was oh, taking like short exposure pictures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. If you're going to, for, to, to get a longer focal length lens, you need also a sturdy, uh, sturdy tripod. For yeah, I was, I was thinking yeah. about just uh, bringing the, the, the Nix with me and just putting yeah. it up there, you know, and throwing it. But I also have uh, something called the, uh, the Skywatcher Solar Quest, um, which oh, I was. I, know, I don't need it. What? 
I, 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 I never used it. I, yeah, it's, I, it's, have, it's, like, I haven't used it yet either. It's still in the box. I'm waiting for a not cloudy sky to kind of play with it. Uh, but, um, you know, it's a, you know, it's remember the older AZ GTI, the little kind of yeah. L kind of thing. What they did was they moved the bracket onto the other side and they put the Helio Fine software in there where it's got built in GPS and wireless where it's supposed to find the sun. Uh, on its own you just throw it out there and it finds it it does gps knows where it's pointing and knows awesome. the altitude of the sun and kind of goes there so yeah. i i don't know if that's going to work well i got to look at the weight because it's a uh, 11 pound max just like the rest of those kind of uh things so what is that 5.5 kilos i think something like that um yeah and and you know we'll have to see because uh you know the time run one to 400 might be pretty decent um I've seen it. It probably runs about five, six hundred bucks US, I think, something like that. Um, yeah, it's like in the in the hundreds and not in the thousands. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. If I want to get like an art lens or something, but this is only for yeah. this is for vacation and for the solar eclipse. That's it. <laughs> you exactly. know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm not going to spend two thousand dollars on a lens. I'm going to use like two times a year. You know, so yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. so that's why I said the ten one hundred. So what was that? <laughs> No, I'm just saying that's basically, you know, like you're saying, you 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 got to use it in a limited, you know, fashion. You know, use it for the eclipse. You know, maybe use it, you know, on vacation or something here and there. That's why probably I'm not going to make this super huge investment, right? Myself personally, because I have a second mount. You know, I have a Celestron um, Advanced VX. Yep. So yeah. I have that. Yeah. I'm just going to stick that out here. And I think I have like the little GPS module. Yep. yep. So I may put that on there and just throw my refractor on here, put a yeah. lens, a cover over it, and That's whatever it. I get, I get. Yeah. <laughs> you can, uh, because you also have these Star Trekers there, huh? I think. Yeah. Like these Star yep. Adventures, these kind of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, right. yeah. Like this guy, yeah. a little sky like hunter thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not so. Yeah, I think it's pretty easy to. Uh, yeah, you do need to polar line them, of course. Still. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think when you like smart telescopes could also be an option if you just want uh, like a decent view of the sun and the solar eclipse. Uh, the C star S fifty would do a decent job, I think. And just oh, you're gonna see a lot of C star you with the best solar picture. eclipse. Yeah. Sorry. You're going to see a lot of pictures for the, from the sea star with the solar eclipse this year. I all, mean, all orange. Yep. Yeah. They will all be all orange. Yeah. Well. <laughs> it will be. It will be. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it's really easy, of course, to just uh, because you don't need to figure out anything that you you just point it at the sun and it will uh, keep yeah. on tracking the sun and you can take some videos and uh, absolutely. And yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, I I would say I think uh, like Eric, I would buy I would just uh, use my Celestron AVX with my refractor telescope and a solar filter, and then uh, just 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 do that. Yeah, yeah, just track just it. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 what I you know because like we were saying the the next solar eclipse is. I'm probably not going to be here for it. We're not going to probably be here for it. who knows. No, what, what we but I, even, 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 even if I am here for it, you know, they're going to have to wheel me out in a wheelchair or something. Well, you, know, you, you could, you know, in all fairness, <laughs> solar eclipses don't only happen will in the United States. Though. You know. <laughs> You know, that's true. That's there, true. There, but there will be. You, 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 travel. Yeah, you could travel. You could do all that. And there's plenty of. I know a guy from my astronomy club that I've seen total eclipse, total solar eclipses. He's seen twelve. Oh wow. Oops. He's seen 12. He's traveled all over the world to see these things. So I mean, he's like one of those kind of those chasing kind of, you know, he loves he, he goes on those airplane flights. He's been on two of those where the airplane flies through totality. Oh, oh wow. Cool. Dude, it's freaking yeah, cool. amazing. <laughs> amazing. That's got to be an experience. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I think so, also it is an experience yeah. like just not looking at the sun, but if you have the solar eclipse, just looking around you and uh, looking at the yeah. darkening of the, of the environment more, right? And look how the animals respond and that kind of stuff. Uh, 
would, would also be awesome. That, that, that is kind of crazy. Yeah, to see how the animals respond yeah. to the eclipse. It that's kind crazy. of interesting. It is. <laughs> that's pretty interesting. That's that's one of the things Maybe that I would really just point a, a regular camera, like just my normal DSLR at at a, a, a nice nature site or something like that to see what happens. Yeah, yeah, dude, it's crazy. It's you know, it's it's that's one of the that that's probably the biggest thing that freaked me out during the eclipse in 2017, where I was in um, uh, Greensville, South Carolina, for that, and we, my wife and I, we traveled down there and. Two of the things that totally freaked me out was one, the silence that just happened. The birds were chirping one minute and then stopped. There was, it was just, and, and the people got quiet too, which made it very eerie. So everyone's like, do you see that? Like, like it's like the, the, the light of the sun because it was gone. They think they need to be quiet. I don't know because it's nighttime. I don't know. Whatever the case may be. And the second thing that freaked me out was the temperature drop. The temperature yeah. drop, it yeah. was like 86 degrees in Greensville um, when we were there. And then at the time of the eclipse, during totality, it dropped to about 63. So it dropped about 20 degrees in about a matter of a minute or two. It was like it got really cold. You had you had sweat on your body because it was so hot and the sweat gave you a chill because now you're cold. And then two minutes later, you're sweating again, <laughs> you know? So it's a, it was like kind of, those two things kind of freaked me out. But if you want to go to the next eclipse after this, um, the next total eclipse will be August 12th, 2026. And wow. You know what? Maybe that's a good time. Maybe that's probably going to be a good Where trip. Will it be? Iceland. Iceland. Oh, that's not too far. I, Greenland, okay, not too Iceland, bad. Spain, Northeast Portugal. So that's not too bad. That might well, be a North nice. East that could be a fifteenth wedding anniversary for my wife. We always wanted to go to Iceland. Yeah. It's in August <laughs> too. It's in August, so it won't be that cold either. So yeah, yeah, because you go, you fly into like Reykjavik or somewhere. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, that would be kind no, of cool. No, you know what you do? This is what you do. Out of New York, I already did this. You take a one-way cruise to Greenland, Iceland. Oh, yeah. And then you fly Across back. Atlantic. Yeah. Then you fly back. That's what you do. There you go. Mm. There you hey, go. That's, that's I love plan. getting a, a couple of beers on a, on a boat. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, speaking, speaking of beers, I did have a question here that I wrote down. It says... About uh, beers? Yeah, okay. it was. Is there an actual photographer on YouTube that you would like to meet in person for a beer? Oh, this sorry, is, is there an actual photographer on YouTube which I am invited yeah. yeah, yeah, for yeah, a there, beer? There, there, yeah, is there an actual ah. is there an actual photographer wow. on YouTube <laughs> that you, know, uh, that you would um, like to meet I, in I would, person uh, for a beer? Ah, uh, yeah, I think a lot of them, but. Um, I would say maybe Chuck from Chuck's astrophotography. Chuck's, I, Chuck's I, a lot I, of fun. I, uh, I, I, uh, I started doing astrophotography in 2016, and he was one of the guys who was already uh, 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 on YouTube. And I think he's just su such an authentic. And uh, yeah, of course, I don't know him personally, but uh, when I look at his videos, He's, uh, he's very authentic and just tells it like it is. And um, I also asked him one time to, uh, to to partner in a video about the EQ6R Pro. And I really liked it. He was really responsive and uh, kind. So, uh, yeah, I would uh, invite Chuck. But also, I think Dylan O'Donnell, uh, Trevor Jones, uh, all these guys who I think they, they kind of inspired me to actually take that extra step and uh, get started with astrophotography back in uh, 2016. I, it, well, it just amazed me like, hey, what are the, these guys doing in their backyard? Can they really see all that amazing stuff in the night sky? And uh, so, yeah, I would definitely invite them. And, uh, and I think all of you, of course. Huh? Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot keep track of all the astrophotography people and channels on YouTube. I know, uh, I know, it's crazy. Yeah, but just a, crazy. A, a, a fun fact about Chuck uh, and Chuck's astrophotography is that Chuck was the second guest on Astroworld TV when it was its, uh, his, cool. its rendition of uh, 
Cosmic Charlie and Declination Dan. This was, if you remember his videos um, way back and his, if you go back, there was a time where he just didn't want to be on, he didn't want to show his face on, he, he was he was always yeah, the, true. That's the right. voice of God out. behind the screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and, and he was and always the, like that. Like, uh sequence generated pro screen and the yeah, voice yeah and then the voice right <laughs> so he just did, he didn't like that so so he I, I he obviously got over that and then his channel exploded but during that time so our first interview with chuck was via cell phone speakerphone on a recorded <laughs> video and we yeah. played that um a lot that was me and charlie way back when the first guest on astro uh um on astro world tv was actually uh Doug Struble. Um, uh, he's another astrophotographer from the, the same Detroit area um, as Chuck. Okay. So uh, uh, two two big heavyweights that were one of the first uh, the first guests that we had. So that's pretty. Doug, I think he does uh, solar. With he does a lot. With his one fifty two. I think he yep. has, yeah, yeah, looks more scientific one fifty two, yep. which you know yeah. and. Uh, I've used one of those, and we've talked. You know, we talked. We were talking mm -hmm. a little bit about these bigger refractors. That's the one thing I do like about a telescope like the 152, and even the 127. The Explore Scientific made these uh, with carbon fiber to make them lighter. Yeah, you know, yeah. versus some of the other traditional refractors. That yeah, if you had that same aperture and that same type of telescope. It could weigh, you know, maybe 25 pounds or, or so, or even more versus, you know, something with the carbon fiber. It's easier to transport and move around at least. So, I th yeah, I, I think the 152 yeah. is a great telescope personally. And especially, I think for solar, uh, if, we're, if we were talking about solar, if you want to do some time lapses of solar flares and uh, prominences and uh, sunspots acti sunspot activity, you need yeah. really that bigger aperture to get these very detailed uh, high resolution uh, time lapse videos. Because I, I've yeah. been doing it with my apochromatic like 500 millimeter focal length telescope, but just like the moon, you know, yep. you get a you get a decent shot, but then you really want to zoom in. I like if I want to image Copernicus Crater or Montes Apenninus, something like that, uh, the Apollo, Apollo 15 uh, landing yep. site there. I, I mm -hmm. uh, always use the native focal length edge HD to get like uh, to that really high resolution uh, images. And I think yeah. you can do that also with a 150 refractor for um, solar imaging, I guess. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. well, apparently a lot of people want to have a beer with you, Weedo, because it's going up and down the, the chat saying, uh, I want to have a beer with Weedo. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so. Who wouldn't want to have a beer with the Netherlands? <laughs> uh, we, we, go, we go to Belgium, okay? We, yeah. we go to Belgium because yeah, it's it's just south of the Netherlands, a couple of hundred kilometers drive, and they have better beer than. Uh, than yeah, so so we can go meet uh, who is it? Evo, right? Evo Stoinov down there, right? You know, so so uh, APT, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he's yeah, the I, uh, APT. I, we have this very popular brand in the Netherlands called Heineken. Heineken, uh, you call it? Like my, my favorite. People people bring around the world, but. Um, the better beers are in Belgium. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll I'll take a Heine. That's okay. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the, the hamburger of beer. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's interesting because across the world, uh, yeah, this is not astrophotography. Let's let's quit this. <laughs> uh, we, we, <laughs> but, uh, to say Heine, well, Heine we, we, is like uh, being sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, I, I just want to say Heine is being promoted as this big high quality beer across the world. But then the Netherlands, they, it's like the mass-produced kind of beer you you only drink on Carnival or. It's basically our equivalent of Keystone Light. <laughs> yeah. Actually, maybe 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 Pabst Blue Ribbon or something. Maybe, maybe PBR then. Yeah, Absolutely. there you go. Is that really like the, the affordable kind of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> no, we, we, we have a little thing that we do when we go off the rails like this, and I think now it fits the perfect time to do it. So I don't, I don't want you to freak out when it goes across the screen, but. Uh... <laughs> Off the rails. Right back. There you go. Get back. Get back. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's funny. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so let's see what I, I, I um, okay. We were talking about, you know, being in Belgium and, you know, and, and, and you know, and in the Netherlands. Upcoming, you know, this next month, we have, um, Dan and I are going to be at Neef. Yep. Um, is, cool. um, which is one of the larger astronomy forums right. here in, you know, in North America. Is there any, um, have you had a chance to attend anything similar in the Netherlands or around nope, Europe nope, that yeah. you've had a chance to? Not yet. Is there is there yeah. one where you would like to have a I chance to go have, to? Or? Uh, yeah, PAS. There are, there are, uh, I need to check the names because, but I know there is a pretty pretty big uh, sh um, like. Um, There's PAS sort of conference, in the UK. Conference in uh, in the UK in London. There has been one in in February. I can't remember the yeah, name. Yes, it's, it's called PAS. PAS, yeah. yeah. And in Germany, they also have one each year. Yep. So I've been uh, thinking about going there, but um, I, I don't think it is as big as in the United States, actually. I don't PA, know PAS is uh, actually pretty large. It's, it's, pretty it's, big. it's yeah. not as big as AIC used to be, unfortunately, AIC, um, which is with the advanced, um, was it Advanced Imaging Conference, I think it was? Um, I thought it was Astro Imaging Conference. Astro Imaging Conference. Um, yeah. And... Um, they they actually stopped doing live um, live conferences as of this year, unfortunately. But NEF is still around, and that's the Northeast Astronomy Forum. And the two days before that is um, NIAC, which is the Northeast Astro Imaging Conference. Uh, so it's a four day kind of weekend, and people like uh, uh, George Hilios from Hocus Focus, um, Nico's doing a talk, Ron Breacher's doing a talk. Uh, Russ Croman is doing a talk, so I mean, uh, it's 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 a full fill. The, the the last part of the weekend is more about seeing all the new new toys. You know, all the vendors are there. You know, Celestron, Explore, um, you know, Rainbow Astro. Everybody's there. Ioptron, yeah, yeah, ZWO. Yeah, so that's a super big opp opportunity <clears throat> opportunity to talk to each other in person also and just get to meet each yeah. other and see the latest uh, oh, yeah. developments. And it's it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. great when you I've sit there. I've been to like uh, university conferences, it's a totally different topic, but uh, it's always nice to meet uh, people in person. You you only talk, we can talk like this, but would be, would be not much nicer to be at a conference. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's why I've been traveling. I've been traveling all over the last year. I traveled all over the country, actually all over two countries. I've been uh, back and forth from the U S and Canada. So I went to Starfest in Canada. Cool. Um, yeah. I was able to hang out with uh, two, the two friends of Ron and Sean Nielsen. Plus I was able to catch up with uh, Trevor Jones and, uh, and his wife. Uh, which was really nice. Um, and then I got to hang out with uh, Wayne Parker from Sky Shed. I got Eric a hat for because yeah. he just got a Sky yeah. Shed pod. So I got him a hat. <laughs> yeah. um, and then I was able to go down to, and not only that, and it's not only about meeting, you know, these personalities that we, we, uh, we, you know, we know and love from YouTube or whatever, but seeing other people that you, you see that are fans of you. Like I was able to see, um, Jason Pellegrini in the Nebraska star party. I was able to drive. I drove through, um, to, to, uh, Eric's over by Eric's house. Um, and I went through a, a city called Lima, Ohio, and that was the place of um, um, of a robbery. A, an astronomy observatory got robbed, and um, mm -hmm. I was able to, with the help of all the um, all the members on Patreon and everything, we were able to make a donation to them. Um, and I was able to drop off a full set of Explore Scientific fifty two degree eyepieces to replace what they lost. Um, and that was kind of cool. And, and seeing all these people all over the place, it's, it's really nice when you go traveling and, and meeting. I mean, I, I, Dave, I went down to DC and went to, to, to hang out with you for a beer or two at that bar when we did the, uh, when you bought my 127, when you know? I bought his telescope. Yeah. So, I mean, my, my mother-in-law lived in DC, he's in the area. So we met for a beer and made the swap, you know? So it's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah cool. that's that's gonna be you know what if I can have the opportunity next year maybe to go to Starfest up north I really want to go and hang out and meet 
with Wayne, Wayne Parker, who is the owner of Skyshed uh, Observatories, because I do have a Skyshed now. I, I can actually say, you know, I am one of the few, you know, in this, you know, quorum that we're having right now that can say, yes, I actually have a backyard observatory. I actually have Rub it. it I in, say that. Rub it in. <laughs> It I, just twisted in there a little bit, right? <laughs> but you know what? It's great. And honestly, it's fantastic. It is definitely a game changer to be able to just go outside and open up the, you know, the, the, the clamshell. See, see, and, see, now that's the problem right there. You still got to go outside and open up the clamshell. You should have got I'm it. I'm fine with that right now. <laughs> hey, baby step. Everything's a baby You should have got it fully motorized. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't You can't control your dome with an ASIR. I'm sorry. You know what? Uh, <laughs> do, you, do, you, do, you, do you even have one yet? Do you even have one yet? I, I don't need one. I got telephone wires. They cover up everything. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. But see, you know what? You know who, who would really be, you know, who, who who would be awesome to have on here if he would he would trump me? TJ. Oh, TJ, TJ Conley we would, can trump, get... would trump me because now he's got the pod S. Yep. <laughs> yep. So okay. he can talk all about automation yeah i can turn it here i can turn the dome oh, there oh trust me T tj uh, will be on i know tj lives about three hours north of me so i mean yeah. uh it's it's not that bad i could go over to his house and do an interview really and just hang out but yeah, uh, yeah. but um but you know it's i know it's uh it's getting a little late over by you isn't it or are you yeah. are you okay uh yeah, 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 I'm still here. <laughs> all right. No, I'm just, I'm just want to say, I don't want to keep you up all night. You know, yeah. we, we could sit here and BS on this till for hours. I mean, you know, this is, this is, uh, you know, this is definitely a treat having you on, Weedo. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, great, great to be here. Well, yeah. you, you know what I want to do, Weedo, and if you could say, and I, I've sent stuff to uh, to Gideon over in the Netherlands, so don't worry about shipping. Uh, but I, I want to send you something um, that we do every year um, for being a guest on the show. I want to send you our um, Astro World calendar, 2024 calendar. Um, and this is actually um, populated with images that were made from all of our members uh, that have won through the entire year of last year. Wow. So if you send me your address, um, I'll send nice. you. A copy of this and uh we'll get it out to you might take two weeks to get there but i mean it'll get there, <laughs> yeah, we get there. i really so appreciate it i'll yeah. put it here behind me on the wall no problem <laughs> okay. cool. so i i have one other question because i know i don't want to be respectful of time and everything uh we know other than astrophotography and astronomy is there what it, outside of this what do you enjoy doing you know what do you you know ah, okay. is there other things yeah. you enjoy doing uh, I know Dan, yeah, you play, you're a musician. You're a musician. I have to say, yeah, 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 absolutely. And uh, you know, before I was completely involved in the, all of this, uh, I played in a lot of uh, like local cover bands. Uh, okay. I played the synthesizer uh, and did some second voice uh, singing in the like. Uh, yeah, we, we went we went to uh, uh, weddings, anniversaries. We played nice. in bars. And yeah, we had we had I was in different bands, so crazy Tex-Mex kind of carnival-esque uh, uh, bands where we played some weird like <laughs> party music hey. uh, to to the more classic uh, weddings where we play a nice uh, a we are family kind of music. <laughs> okay, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. So yeah, I, I really like uh, and 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 uh, some running and bicycling, just to sing fit and healthy. <laughs> I, sure. I'm, sorry, I'm trying to lose some weight. Actually, uh, <laughs> ever, I think we all Corona, are. Twice, I, I, I added I about 10, 10 kilos. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think that's we're all trying to lose a little, little bit of weight. <laughs> yeah, we all are. Yeah, we all are. Yeah. You know, we're, we're all about that age where you know, kind of weight starts. You, you, you're kind of like the same weight, but it's just moving in different places that they weren't there before yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know it used to be in the thighs which you didn't mind so much now it's in the belly and <laughs> you know yeah. so, so. <laughs> i want to show you it's, 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 all, it's, all, it's all it's all the good beer you know it's all like the it's all the good mm -hmm. like belgian wheat 
beer and stuff you like that. Enjoying life. Yeah. <laughs> and totally. Totally. I'm just looking for a quick awesome picture. Um, yeah. We got any more questions in the chat? I'm looking here right now. There's not many other questions right now in the chat. And we've been in like all of my in between questions just to keep things going are pretty much all uh, covered and stuff like that. Um, yeah, unless I show, did I ask? I was going to show you guys a picture. Let me show you this picture because yeah, 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 talking, yeah. Eric was talking about uh, uh, how light those carbon fiber telescopes are. Oh yeah, sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look here. Let's see if I can get to it. Uh, share screen. <laughs> there it is. Oh, not yet. There, there we go. There we go. So there that's the is. carbon fiber telescope. But you, wow. you put that uh, night crawler on there, all that. It's taken all three weights and the extension bar of that EQ6 <laughs> to keep wow. it balanced. And and not for wow. nothing, I, I wow. think, and I think you actually had to put the extension on there. I think I did. Yeah, I took the extension <laughs> bar too. You oh, had to get wow. the weights further down to do that. You are almost at the max on that. I think so. Uh, pretty close, but yeah. it's it still tracks 0.4. There you go. There you, there go. you go. I can't argue that's with that. Count. Nicey, nice. That's, that's it. That, that is it. Awesome. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll just show you a little picture real quick. Not, it has nothing to do with astrophotography, but there you go. That, that's, that's, yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's, there that's, it is. That's, that's me there in 1991 <laughs> with my Rickenbacker uh, playing bass at a bar. Yep, absolutely. I still have that guitar, too. I still have that guitar. Yeah. I love that I guitar. Still have four, four of mine. Nope, that's the last guitar there I have left. Go. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I used to sing and have the whole, the whole, um, what is it, the uh, uh, Ron Jeremy handlebar mustache that I had going on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. But uh, but yeah, I, I I know it's coming up to about ten o'clock over there. Um, you know. Uh, yeah. Usually, this is about the time where we kind of do some uh, final thoughts. If we don't have any more questions on on the chat, uh, Eric, have you been monitoring that at all? Because yeah, I, was I have. Yep, I have been. Yeah, I have been. And, uh, oh, there is actually really one have. by Mister B actually that just came up. Um, okay. But question for the panel: How do you think availability of low cost robotic telescopes will affect the hobby? Ooh. Are we yeah. <laughs> Are we talking? Scary we talking question. Scary. Yeah. Uh, are we talking? Are, are we talking the um, like the Sea Star? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Low cost they robotic. Have, uh, yep. the, they will keep on getting better. So the next generation will get, have the bigger sensors, I think. So it will get. It will, you you will be able to take like larger field of view pictures. Um, I think the, the 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 automated stacking is is will be getting better all the time. Yep. There will be mosaic and panorama images possible with the smaller sensor size telescopes. Will will we see some cooling? I mean, I, I was actually thinking the the main issue is of course the rotation, LBS, right? Yeah? right? The rotation. But yeah. if, if you yeah, would like, rotation. instead of buying an EQ uh, computerized equatorial mount. If you would like develop a camera rotator for that. Yeah, you have it inside where it just rotates the chip even, you know? Yeah. So I yeah. think that might 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 be a next iteration uh step they, they are willing to take or well, I think I think we're all still waiting for at least a lot of people are still waiting and have asked constantly asking me because at NEF last year, and now we're coming up on NEF NEF 2023, ZWO um launched their CAA, which is a camera angle rotator, right? And, um, or camera angle adjuster, they called it, if I remember right. Um, and we're still waiting for it to come yeah, out in retail. Yet. And, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, we're still waiting for it. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe it comes out probably by, you know, sec end of second quarter, maybe. Um, but, um, 
still a little a lot of people now now speaking of asir and caa and stuff like that i don't know if you've heard about this and i'm sure a lot of people have because i believe that Quive uh, made a video on this regarding the tube tech astro station um i don't know if you've heard about it uh have you heard about this I, I heard about no, no. I heard about StellarMate, that kind of stuff. It's it's a StellarMate kind of stuff, but it's at the price point of an ASI Air, where okay. um, it's four hundred bucks. That um, it's still on prototype, so it's going to be out by the end of the year. Um, but it's still on prototype, and I'm actually supposed to be getting a prototype at the end of this month. So um, it, basically, it's an ASI Air Raspberry Pi. Um, not the time, not an ASA, it's a Raspberry Pi, um, with um, the capability of running pretty much whatever you want that's ASCOM driven. So, any camera ASI you want, it, it suppose it, well, that's what they said about the Stellar Mate Pro, too. It's um, all the time, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I think sooner, so. sooner or later, the, it's a lot, come of it out. Depends, a lot of it depends on the on the the the. the friendly interface and if it's really really like the, the, the thing that makes the asi air a preferred choice for many people this despite the fact that they have to buy zwo cameras of course right. because you cannot run any other right. is i think the really like the touch based user friendly pretty user friendly and understandable interface they have yeah it's really so neat it did and it and it's uh it's it, it doesn't have a lot of fatal flaws i think so you you, you can like photo alignment works every time. Yep. Uh, I I also have, for instance, the with the dwarf. Yeah, I don't know, maybe I should with the dwarf, dwarf too. Yeah. Uh, that that software they have an ad, like it's more general purpose kind of tele zoom lens, and you have an astrophotography mode, but it's not super well developed. So sometimes it just goes great goes crazy. And yeah. when that happens a lot, when you your camera keeps disconnecting or Oh, you, you just can't get your rig up and running. That, that that is, I think, that will be very important when you are going to develop these smart devices. Like, yep. can a user yeah. just switch yeah. it on? Will it immediately recognize your camera? Uh, will it have an interface that is really easy to use? And uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And 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 you're right. I think the you know there is. I mean, I literally have like I have two or three of them. Uh, one of them. One of them's right I, here, hiding you, in the back. I you know? love this thing. So, yeah, you know, I love yeah. it. You know what? Yeah. I, I, I still have a bone to pick with these guys. I really do. Um, please, please, can you just put a driver out there that says Pegasus Nix 101 and that has full <laughs> functionality? Please. I know you don't like each other. I saw the Cloudy Night stuff. And last year with the whole Chinese New Year and making a mistake in the driver and it didn't work and went on vacation for two weeks. Um, but just do me a favor. I have, th I have customers that want to use your product but want to be able to use their NICs because yeah. of the higher. Or do yourself a favor, come out with a, you know, a 20 kilo um, payload capacity AM7, whatever. <laughs> I, I I even told that I even mentioned that to you like a like a week or two ago. It was like, why don't they just build an AM7? If they build I'm, I'm an sure AM7, they will. I'm sure they will. That has a twenty kilo payload. Yeah. That's gonna go. That's gonna be flying off the shelves just as much as the AM5 and AM3 and, and everything yeah. like that. You know, so just. Think about it, guys. I mean, it's like Sam. Do me a favor. Think about it. Give I, for me. Let me help you. I'm talking <laughs> to you, Sam, right now. ZWO. <laughs> let me help you. I love this damn thing. I just need a heavier payload. Just need uh, heavier payload. Well, and in, I'm on <laughs> in, in all fairness, you know the you know the the ASI Air does not. You can use any mount you want, you know. That, that yeah, that, I think so. Right? You have you, like the EQ uh, mod kind of drivers, yeah, there. they yeah, are in the you can use, airport. I think you, you can, can use whatever you want for now. You just can't use the Pegasus Nix. <laughs> that's, the only, 
you know, no. and that's not right. even true. You can use it, but you got to, there's a workaround for it. There's, you know, right. th th there's a workaround. You got to use on step electronics drivers and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. And it works sometimes. It's not as functional as and, it could be. And, and, and the, th yeah. the thing that I love that's really cool about the AM5 that I'll be honest, that that that's really, really been alluring to me has been the price point. They priced it well. Well, in, in all you fairness, know. if you want to get out of the realm of this, all you got to do is go buy a Melee anyway. You get it for two ninety nine, three hundred 300 bucks that. anyway. You know what I'm saying? And and you can go that route. I got that, that too. You know? I got that too right here. <laughs> and, 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 if you, and if you're crazy yes, like me, you, you can do, get you one of these, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, no. price, yeah. no. because, because, you know, the only – and the reason is is because the reason why I've gotten away from this and moved on to this – is because of this man that's right over here, you know, and my and he's convincing me to like start getting stuff like this. Here, hold on, hold on, I got it right. See, here. see he's realized this other pro product like, people that like, make like stuff. stuff like stuff like this, you, like stuff like this. <laughs> you know, know, or 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 my my or the the asado, you know, stuff like that because. They're awesome. Yeah. And yeah. I, they're from different brands. I, I, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I, that that's I, the whole thing, I, right? I, we don't but I think I think because you, you have this also with app uh, iOS versus Android, right? And uh, yep. so you, yeah. you will have this open oh, space yeah. where people yeah, you want to integrate all kinds of different like tools to be working together. And you have some software developers that are aiming for that. But you, you, there's also something to be said. Why is everybody still work, walking around with those iPods, you know? <laughs> Sometimes it's also nice to create this, this more closed loop system. And yeah, I know it's limited, but uh, it, it is very reliable and works. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. It does. It does. So, yeah, it does. yeah. It would it would be great I mean, to have everything uh, like uh, would, we we, we need we need different kind of options as cons consumers and then we can just uh, make our own decision. Uh, Absolutely. Where, what to go for? Right. You are very yeah. right. You are very right. There we go. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. But it but it is a good product and it works. You know if you you know it, yeah. you you know somebody compared this to what though somebody said it in there somebody compared this I believe it was this to a gateway drug, and uh, and <laughs> so so you know you you. <laughs> You get this, and you work with it, you yeah. play it, and then you finally find out there's something better out there, like a night crawler or a, or a rotator that with that yeah. that's out there, or something like. And then you yeah. find out that the bat mounts are better, and you know all this kind of stuff. And now you're like, oh my god, I could, you know, I'm I'm struggling here. But you know what? A lot of people do get a lot of good results with this and EAF a scope. And whatever amount they want, a lot of people do get a lot of good results with it. So you can't really bash yeah. it. Um, it is no, easy. No, I know you're not. I'm just saying. I'm just saying in general. You know, and um, uh, planetary imaging is also a little bit limited on that thing. Eh? It's, get, it's getting better, <laughs> though. It's getting better. They're all yeah, it's, making improvements. It's, it's definitely higher FPS. Yeah. Well, yes. that's what. Again, you know, you got you got to make sure you get the you know right kind of camera for that you know what i mean so hey oh yeah yeah, yeah. you know so <laughs> you know you, you you know you get you get something that runs at you know 600 by 480 at 270 frames per second you know the, 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 then you're okay right <laughs> you know <laughs> but, oh man yeah cool okay well I, i'm done with my rant i'm done with my rant i know it's go. getting late Guido, so, but Guido, I so appreciate you so much you for having on. me, guys. No, thank you for coming thank on. So and, uh, having yeah. me. Real, real, real pleasure, real yeah. nice to talk to you. Thanks. And, yes, and this shuts off. If you want to stick around and give me your address, this will still run in the background, not live. Uh, I, um, or if I you will. just want to email it to me, that's fine too. That's 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 fine. Yeah. But um, okay. But thank you so much for coming on. I don't think you know. Why don't we do a little quick final thoughts, and we can let Guido go to bed. Yeah, for sure. Uh, again, I know it's been a Saturday, everybody. We really appreciate you guys coming on. Guido, again, thank you so much for your time coming on. Uh, it's been a blast having you. Hey, maybe um, if you're so inclined, maybe, uh, Dan, you can talk some, maybe Astropalooza later this year if oh, you're yeah. also interested, something like that. But, again, just a, it was a great show, really great interaction. Thank you so much to our 
viewers in our membership, you know, for the questions you've asked and everything like that. Hope you guys got a lot of fun out of this. I know I did. And uh, yeah, I will. We will. I won't be here on Wednesday, but I'll be back on Friday. But and I'll see you guys then. So you guys have a great weekend ahead. Awesome, Dave. Awesome. Uh, just um, basically, yeah. Thanks, Guido, for coming out and hanging out with us. You know, it was a pretty good way to spend a rainy, cruddy Saturday here. So <laughs> you know, <laughs> wasn't like I typically this would be my golf day, but not today. So. But thanks for sharing your experience with us and, you know, going through your uh, thought process on how you do it and why you do it. It's awesome to, to know you're out there. And I love your content on your videos. They're fun to watch. So just keep up keeping it up. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. Oh, we yeah, don't... Nice. Uh, thank you for the kind words. And, uh, yeah, Dan, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's your turn. Go right ahead. Oh, no, no. So th thanks so much for having me on. I, uh, I really appreciate it. And um, I think it's super informative to meet other uh, guys who are also enjoying the hobby and we learn so much for, from each other. So having this kind of interaction and sometimes going off the rails, that's really, really <laughs> nice way to learn, to learn more in a positive way. So uh, really great to, to be here despite uh, the time difference and the 10 o'clock, but uh, no problem. Oh. So I, if you want to have me back, then just let me know. We can uh, can do some more stuff. Yeah, may, yeah, maybe we could. Uh, we'll work. We'll work on December and see if uh, you know you want to come on for do a presentation for Astropalooza. Yeah, yeah. Hey, cool. Great. Would be awesome. Would be great. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and we do a lot of giveaways and everything. It's pretty cool. But um, all right, everybody. For eight hours, eh? It's eight, eight hours. hours. Yeah. It's eight <laughs> hours. Yeah. <laughs> So heroes, we do, we do, we do. <laughs> hey, you know, what? we did it the first year. The first year, I thought it was a joke. I said, "Why don't we? We don't have Neef. It's the middle of COVID. Why, you know, you know, <laughs> nobody's doing anything. Nobody's going out. We got to do something. There's no nothing. So why don't we just do this thing? And I'm going to call it Astropalooza. So me and Eric got together and thought about some people to just get in contact. I've already, I've already was friends with the Masters of Pixel Insight and Sean Nielsen. So I was able to get. Um, that year, I was able to get uh, Amy Astro, uh, Charles Bracken, Dr. Christian Sass for my telescope. Um, who else? Um, yeah. um, I'm, I'm forgetting. Uh, Astro, uh, uh, Amy, uh, Amy Molly, Amy, Astro Molly. Um, Astro, Astro Astrona Molly. Molly, yeah, from Molly Wakeling. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, like I was able to get a bunch of people, and then that was, I mean, I, I and I ended off with a shot of whiskey because I was so tired. I just did it, <laughs> you know. I, <laughs> And, and now it's a thing. Everybody watches it to take the shot of whiskey at the end. So, so it's like, you know, but, um, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's very informative. It is more presentation type of thing. So it's like, it's not a one-on-one. -on -one. It's more of like, talk about what you want to talk about for a half an hour. And then we go on, you know, but it's, it's, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun and uh, I enjoy doing it, even though it's a long day. So. And as long as Eric uh, doesn't uh, have an Army Navy game, you know, again, because that's usually... you know what you need to really think about scheduling that a little bit earlier or later, then, man. No, I'm just saying earlier or later. What you? <laughs> earlier no, I'm or later. Earlier, either, either it's, a different it's eight Saturday, hours. Either, either. What do you mean earlier or later? Saturday, you know, I'm, just, I'm just saying the Saturday before or the Saturday after. Saturday before is yeah, no good. I, Saturday before is no good because it's Thanksgiving. Saturday oh, after. I, I didn't have a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> my, <laughs> my wife's so, not a problem with that. So, <laughs> so last last year I had to watch from the the dreaded Dominican Republic. Yes, you were, oh, and you was you were sending oh, us pictures. Oh, here, here. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but oh, boy. but yeah, so yeah, so it so be, hey. Be. Shut up, Dave. <laughs> Shut up, Dave. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, Guido, if you're not doing anything next Wednesday and you're up till about three o'clock in the morning, um, we 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 do have um, uh, George Helios coming on from uh, from um, uh, Astro, the creator of uh, Hocus Focus uh, on Nina. So he's going to come on and hang out. Following that, on the twentieth, right before the eclipse, we have uh, Alan Friedman 
who is the, the uh, wonderful um, astrophotographer doing a lot of solar, uh, is going to be coming on from joining us from upstate New York. So that's going to be a lot of fun as well. And if you're so inclined, we know you, it's always on YouTube. So if you ever want to skim through the videos, you're more than welcome. So uh, uh, they're all up there. But uh, I want to say thank you seriously for, for coming on and hanging out with us and, and sharing your journey through this, this wonderful thing we call astrophotography, um, through all the ups and the downs that we all have. But th thank you for coming on and hanging out with us. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, uh, guys. It was very right. fun to be here. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a great week, rest of your weekend. You got another Saturday, Sunday, you know, so go enjoy yourself. And remember, as always, to keep imaging and keep educating and clear skies. And we'll see you Wednesday night. Have a good night, everybody.